25 years ago. This was the starting line for Canada's Terry Fox. The shallows of the Atlantic at St. John's, Newfoundland. From there, he would head west into rural provinces, through the streets of Toronto, across countless canyons, and finish near his home in Vancouver, where the sun sets into the Pacific. If I don't make it, nobody would make it. Maybe I won't make it, but if it's up to me, I think I can do it. Terry Fox was an 18-year-old from British Columbia when he was diagnosed with bone cancer in his right knee. Amputation and chemotherapy left him with an artificial leg and memories of those still in the cancer ward. Kids my age and younger, and, and you just can't leave something like that and, try and forget it, and, and uh, I couldn't anyway. I had to try and do something about it. And so he did. Terry trained on his new leg for 14 months, then told his family that he would run east to west across Canada, hoping to raise $1 million for cancer research. I said, why can't you run across British Columbia? And he said, because not only people in BC get cancer. Well, I couldn't argue that. On April 12, 1980, at the easternmost point of Canada, it began, the Marathon of Hope. And Terry would do it by running 26 miles. A marathon every single day. It defies logic, really. Not only running a marathon, who runs a marathon a day? Let alone who runs a marathon a day on an artificial leg? It didn't matter if it was snowing, pouring rain, 90 degree Fahrenheit heat. He had to do that marathon every day. With his best friend Doug Allward and brother Daryl following in a support van, 21-year-old Terry would rise at 4 a.m. to run 12 miles, rest, then do 14 miles in the afternoon, seeking donations across lonely expanses of highway. At first, few knew of him, and donations were spotty. Terry kept running. Two months into the Marathon of Hope, Terry entered the province of Ontario and was invited to kick off a CFL game. We came up out of the arena, and I began thinking to myself, wouldn't it be nice if people knew who he was? And as we walked towards the sidelines, the announcer started and said, ladies and gentlemen, that's as far as he got. And the place, the place went crazy. With Bill Vigors publicizing Terry's run, the crowds got bigger, more money flowed in. Terry now wanted to raise one dollar for every Canadian, 24 million dollars in all. What resonated with Canadians about Terry was his honesty, his innocence, his determination. That's, I think, why people fell in love with Terry Fox. In Toronto, thousands cheered him. For Canadians, Terry had become an inspirational hero. But what inspired Terry were the children he was trying so hard to help. Children like Greg Scott. I'm crying now because I, there's somebody here right now who is going through the same thing that I went through. Exact same thing, and he's only 10 years old. And I. I had the most inspirational uh, day of my life today. And so Terry gave himself an afternoon off from the Marathon of Hope to swim with Greg. It was just the fourth day off in 137 days on the road. Greg was a great boost to Terry at the time, because I don't think at the time Terry wasn't feeling very good. As he approached the city of Thunder Bay on September 1st, Terry Fox had run 3,339 miles, nearly the distance between Miami and Seattle. He was on this stretch of road at this white marker when he asked to be taken to the hospital. Thunder Bay was a surprise and shock, and we weren't expecting that. None of us were, including Terry. 
Doctors there examined Terry's lungs, then offered a diagnosis. The cancer had returned. He had a tumor the size of a lemon and a tumor the size of a golf ball on both sides of his, in both his lungs. And that's what he ran 26 miles with the day before and the day before and the day before. From a stretcher, Terry shared the news of his diagnosis. The cancer had spread, and now I've got cancer in my lungs. And uh, we gotta go home and, tr and try and do some more treatment. But uh, all I can say is uh, if there's any way I can get out there again and finish it, I will. I can remember turning and looking at me and he said, maybe people now will understand what it was all about. He was so concerned that they had lost focus that what he was doing was to raise money about cancer and about cancer. Terry was taken to a Vancouver hospital to endure new rounds of treatment. Just days later, an impromptu telethon was organized. Ten million dollars. Thank you, Terry. As more than ten million dollars were added to the two million Terry had raised, Terry could know his dream of raising one dollar for every Canadian citizen would someday be a reality. When Christmas 1980 drew near, Terry confided to his mother a single regret. He said, you know, I've raised millions of dollars and I haven't got a dollar to buy my family a, birth a Christmas present. <sighs> and that was really tough. So his older brother lent him some money and Terry bought his mother a gift, this pink waste paper basket. It would be their last Christmas together. Terry was ready to die. He knew he was dying, and um, he knew he wasn't going to make it, and there wasn't any sense fighting anymore. Terry Fox died on June 28, 1981. He was 22 years old. He died surrounded by love. the love of his family, all of whom were with him, and the love and prayers of the entire nation. The entire nation of Canada has never forgotten Terry Fox. In Thunder Bay, this statue remembers Terry in full stride, head up, facing the west, running home. You know, he said before he started the Marathon of Hope, he said, I want to try the impossible to show that it can be done. And in my mind, that's exactly what he did. Terry even wrote in his journal, if I die, at least I'll die happy doing what I wanted to do in life. And I think he did that. 